Sean O'Malley is a bantamweight fan favourite fighter who is becoming a star in the UFC. His star potential is very similar to Paddy Pimblett, who is right now the biggest star in the UFC. And I'm not saying Conor McGregor because I'm talking about an active fighter right now. Sean O'Malley has managed to get a following of 2.4 million followers on Instagram, despite only being 13th ranked in the UFC, which is very rare for a fighter. He has a very good personality, which is why a lot of people are interested in him. Welcome to the Sugar Show, everybody! Sugar Show O'Malley, ladies! Compare that with his aggressive, very good striking style. It's not a surprise that he became a fan favourite so early. First ever fight as an amateur, he fought at 145 pounds against a guy called Stein Anderson. They were both making their debut. As this was his first amateur fight, you could not expect much from Sean O'Malley. The fight began with O'Malley getting taken down multiple times in the fight as he continued to stay on full guard in round one. Due to the activity in the first round, it was clear to see that Stein was fatigued. In the second round, as he would continue to fall to the floor, letting O'Malley land ground and pound from stack guard. O'Malley would land kicks to his head, making him fall to the ground, where he would land ground and pound and win the fight via TKO in the second round. He would then win his next two amateur fights by TKO, then a submission, which is quite rare from O'Malley because he's not known for submissions or jiu-jitsu. Despite him going on a free fight winning streak, he did eventually lose one amateur fight to a fighter called Shea O'Neill by armbar. This was not a bad loss as he went 9-0 in his MMA career after. The first round started with Shea O'Neill shooting for a high crotch takedown on O'Malley. Unfortunately, Shea would continue to control O'Malley on the ground. Shea locked in a tight scarf hold on O'Malley, but he still managed to survive. O'Malley tried to lock in an armbar on the ground, but Shea somehow managed to pass his guard into side control. O'Malley then got caught in an armbar in full guard and was forced to tap. That was some good ground game to watch. You can see them feeling each other out on the ground. Sean going for some submissions, missing some, and not even noticing a chance for an plata. And Shea was trying to stay on top and keep control of a wild dogfight. This was a very good match. He then beat his next opponent, Colin Lee, by unanimous decision, outlanding him on the feet. Sean would lose a second time by submission, but that was the last time that he ever was submitted in his entire amateur and pro career. This came by way of Rene Kachok to Miles, I can't even pronounce it, just do it anyway, Mazur Wikski in the first round. Miles would take O'Malley down, landing vicious ground and pound from set guard. He continued to hold O'Malley down in half guard, landing devastating blows to Sean's head. Miles locked up a choke in back mount, where O'Malley was forced to tap. That was the last time O'Malley would ever lose in the amateur. O'Malley would then beat all three of his opponents by TKO, submission and decision. Now that O'Malley was experienced in the amateurs, he then fought his first professional fight against Josh Reyes. Unfortunately, there is no footage for this fight. Some sources claim he won by TKO, where others say he won by submission. Nonetheless, he still won his debut in the first round in exciting fashion. It was clear to see his jiu-jitsu had improved, as he had won two fights by submission. If you want to say the first fight was by submission, beating Omar Avalar. He had an extremely close fight. Some would say it was controversial, as a lot of people believed that O'Malley lost the first and third round and only won the second round. But, in my opinion, I believe he won the fight as he landed more damage, whereas Quartes had more control time than damage. And MMA is not based on control time. It's about the amount of damage you can do to your opponent in the fight. O'Malley won his next three fights via KO, first beating Tyson Lin. This fight made him look very talented as O'Malley would land multiple combos on his opponent, winning the first round in dominant fashion. The second round started with Lim pushing O'Malley against the cage, where O'Malley would judo throw him and control him on the ground. O'Malley knocked him down with a 1-2 combo, landed ground and pound from stack guard. Sean landed a clean head kick, knocking Tyson down to the ground, getting his second KO, not TKO, professional. Sean then fought Irvin Veloz at Extreme Beatdown, where he won by KO in 2 minutes and 34 seconds into the first round. The round started with O'Malley using his signature flashy kicks and landing consecutively on Irving's head. O'Malley then slipped Irving's jab and then KOs him out cold. O'Malley landed two strikes until the referee jumped in to stop the fight. To continue this winning streak, he then fought David Nuzzo, KOing him by way of spinning wheel kick. O'Malley started off the fight in exciting fashion as he landed a spinning body kick to David Nuzzo. We saw O'Malley's best head movement again as he ducked under David's hook and then caught him with a left hook to his head, knocking him down in the process. O'Malley then threw a head kick on the right foot to David's head. David put his hands down, exposing his chin, which led to O'Malley setting up for a perfect spinning wheel kick 
which knocked David out cold. After this fight, O'Malley was now 7-0 as a professional. Dana White saw potential in him, which is why O'Malley was found on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series, where he was featured. O'Malley viciously knocked out Alfred Kashishikayan in the first round to earn his UFC contract. Apologies for that. Alfred came charging at O'Malley, almost getting knocked out with a flying knee. O'Malley was taken down and put into an awkward stack guard position where he'd be stuck there for 40 seconds. O'Malley would try his flashy kicks in the fight, but he wouldn't find good success until later on in the round. Almost getting knocked down by an uppercut, they would begin to exchange in the pocket, but O'Malley became more successful. O'Malley hit Alfred with a right hook, knocking him down for the first time in the fight. He landed a head kick followed by a jumping knee as Alfred panic shot for a takedown. O'Malley would keep him on the back foot by landing a lot of combinations. At this point, Alfred seemed very fatigued. So he kept panic shooting for takedowns, but O'Malley would keep sprawling and defending. O'Malley caught Alfred on the chin with a straight right hand, knocking him out cold. Dana White seemed massively impressed by Sean's performance, which made him offer him a contract to fight in the Ultimate Fighter 26 finale. This was his hardest fight yet, as his opponent was 17 and 6 going into this fight and was an all rounded fighter, whereas O'Malley was just mainly a striker. This fight, O'Malley dominated the first round, landing a lot of combinations whilst evading Ware's strikes. The only problem we saw in the first round is he began to fade in the last few minutes of the round, getting fatigued and tired. The second round, we would see the same thing. O'Malley would mix up his strikes and kicks, expending a lot of energy, which is why we saw him tire in the last minute. Nonetheless, O'Malley dominated the fight from start to finish. He ended up winning this fight by unanimous. It was no surprise he won his next two fights against Andre Sukuhamfa and Jose Alberto Quinoza. He beat Andre by submission and then beat Jose by way of TKO, throwing a head kick and landing punches to the head before the referee stepped in, making him 10-0 as a pro and 3-0 in the UFC. His next fight was against unranked 35-year-old veteran Eddie Wyman. This fight was in a much smaller octagon which would reduce the amount of movement for O'Malley favouring Eddie Wineland to close the distance. Despite this, Sean would use feints on the back foot to prevent Eddie from closing the distance. O'Malley would land kicks to the body to back off Wineland, but then Eddie caught him with a straight right hand, but O'Malley's good chin held up. O'Malley started to up the tempo, catching Wineland with his signature right hand that KO'd him instant. This made O'Malley 4-0. Now O'Malley became a ranked fighter, so the UFC made a fight with Marlon Vera, also known as Cheeto Vera. Cheeto Vera was constantly backing up Sean, keeping him on the back foot, but this led to Sean landing multiple kicks to Cheeto Vera's body. Weirdly, O'Malley kept on falling over, which made people believe O'Malley had ruptured something in his leg. O'Malley caught Vera on the temple with a hook. As he landed the hook, he fell back onto the floor, and at this point you could see that he damaged his nerve. Vera started to land huge elbows to O'Malley's head, the referee then stepped in and stopped the fight. It was discovered after this fight he suffered a Lis Franck injury. A Lis Franck injury is a joint type of injury to the bones or ligaments, or both in the middle part of your foot. In a Lis Franck joint injury, there is usually damage to the cartilage covering these bones in the middle region of your foot. A cluster of small bones form an arc. I agree with O'Malley here, but in his head mentally, he believes he is undefeated, as he said it wasn't a calf kick that caused the injury. Um, Cheeto's tough. That's it. He's tough. He, uh, he's slow. I think we all saw that. <clears throat> I was very high watching that. I'm like, is this slow motion or is he actually that slow? He's slow. He's just not, which is, you know, he's tough. That, that's his best attribute is, is he's durable and he's tough. Um, a rematch after this fight, no, I don't think he's de quite deserved that yet. He beat Davy Grant. I didn't even know Davy Grant was a person. Despite him losing this fight, he came back a year later fighting Thomas Almeida at UFC 260, brutally knocking him out 3 minutes and 52 seconds into the third round. He was 0-3 going into this fight, which made me believe this would be a definite win for O'Malley despite his injury. Thomas Almeida hasn't won a fight since 2016, so 6 years. O'Malley caught him with a heavy head kick in the first round that temporarily wobbled him and damaged his skull. He then knocked him down with a left hook. O'Malley walked off thinking the fight was over, but it wasn't. O'Malley would pressure Thomas Almeida with kicks, quite similar to how McGregor used to strike in his prime, pressuring people with kicks to the body. O'Malley would continue to dominate, sweeping Almeida to the ground in the third round. Sean then hit Thomas with a right overhand in stack guard, 
knocking him out instantly. This made him 12 and one as a pro and five and one in the UFC. Next, he was scheduled to fight Louis Smolker at UFC 26. Louis Smolker then withdrew from their July the 10th pay-per-view due to being medically unfit due to an infection. This led to call-outs from fighters such as Tim Elliott, Ricky Simone, Mirab Devilishki, and Alaya Quinta, etc. Shockingly, O'Malley faced UFC newcomer Chris Matinio. This fight was a complete battering for three rounds. Sean was utilising that long leg kick to the body. He was able to do this because Chris Matinio would keep pressuring him, which left his body exposed to the kick. O'Malley was on the back foot during the first round, but he was able to use his Dominic Cruz-esque movement to avoid Matinio's strikes and take no damage. O'Malley would catch him with an uppercut hook, which knocks him down for the first time in the fight. O'Malley began to follow up with multiple strikes to Matinio's head, throwing spinning kicks in the process. Matinio got dropped again by O'Malley's signature right hand, five seconds towards the end of the round, which O'Malley followed up with a guillotine attempt. Going into the third round, Sean looked like he had no scratch on him, whereas Matinho looked visibly hurt and battered. One thing we can say is Matinho had a good chin despite being dropped twice. He was taking hundreds of shots to the head. 30 seconds left of the third round, they both started swinging, but Sean was winning the exchanges, which led to Herb Dean jumping in to stop the fight. This was by far the easiest fight in O'Malley's career as he left with no damage and probably could have fought in the next month if he wanted to. Rodion Paver was next on the list for O'Malley. Paver was 21-3 as a pro and O'Malley was 14-1. He had beaten opponents such as Alan Nascramento and Kyla Phillips. The Kyla Phillips fight is what gave him the opportunity to fight Sean as Kyla was 10-2 beating fighters such as Song Yudong, Cameron Els, and Cameron Els is the guy who beat Paddy Pimblett when they were both 18. Or I don't think Cameron Els was 18, Paddy Pimblett was though. This was an interesting fight as people assumed it would be a stand-up battle. This fight didn't last long, O'Malley backed off using his effective matrix-like movement. 30 seconds left of the round, O'Malley hit Piver with his signature overhand right which knocked him down and Piver began to swing wildly until O'Malley dropped him again. Jason Herzog jumped in to stop the fight. Sean O'Malley is now back on a free fight winning streak. UFC 276, Sean fought 9th ranked bantamweight pro Pedro Munoz. This fight, O'Malley was more technical, not looking to throw too many flashy kicks, although he did land one spinning head kick. O'Malley landed a straight right onto Pedro's eye, which caused massive discomfort for Pedro, as he kept wiping his eye as it was swelling. O'Malley caught him with an accidental eye poke in round two, which caused the fight to have a timeout. Pedro claimed he could not see out of the eye, so the fight was stopped and declared a no contest by accidental eye poke. I believe the straight right hand in the first round caused his eye to swell, not the eye poke. I believe Munoz was just looking for a way out of the fight because he was getting dominated and he was losing. And I know if that fight was to carry on, it would have went to a decision and O'Malley would have won. So we can really call that a win for him. So at this point, O'Malley is 15-1 and one as a pro fighter in the UFC. But in his mind, he's still undefeated which can be a good mindset to have. But in the future, if he was to get knocked out fairly, he would then have to accept the loss and move on, unlike the Cheeto Vera fight. But I understand why he thinks that, because it was the most unluckiest thing to ever happen. Now O'Malley has a massive test in fighting Piotr Jan. I believe in a three rounder, he has a good chance. But in a five rounder fight, I think Jan wins, as Jan has a style where he takes time to get into a fight. So to answer the question, how good is Sean O'Malley currently right now? I would say he is in the top five best fighters in the bantamweight division, even though he's 13 friend. There is a reason why we are seeing him fight against a high ranked contender called Piotr Jan. It's because his style is a style that could beat Piotr Jan. He's a better striker than him, but wrestling wise, I think that's where he's gonna struggle. I do believe he will eventually win the title, but the UFC need to be careful and not do what they did to Cody Garbrin. What happened to Cody Garbrin is he was pushed too soon. He was gonna be the next star, but they gave him too many champions too soon. And he went from something like 10 and 0 to about 10 and 5, or I think it's 12 and 5 or something like that. So we don't want that to happen to O'Malley. Sean O'Malley is only 27, so he has at least seven years left at his peak. During that time, if he doesn't get injured again, we could expect him to improve his game and hopefully become champion in the UFC. And the reason I want him to become champion in the UFC is because he's a star and the UFC lacks stars. And if the UFC lacks stars, the sport will die because no one's going to watch it if there's just boring fighters on every week. 
We need more personalities in the sport. That's why I say to people, why do people hate Colby? He says some controversial things, but I like his character. He brings in pay-per-view buys. I'm sick and tired of these basic boring personalities in the sport, which makes people think, oh, do I really want to watch this? No, we don't need that anymore. And O'Malley is one of those stars as well. He performed well in the octagon. He can talk well. Well, some people would disagree about talking well. I don't know if I can say that. But he is a star we need in the UFC, badly. And if he can become champion, he will keep the sport alive for a very long time. Talk to you soon.